So welcome to AI TV. Today we're here broadcasting from Cape Town and I'm joined by Peter Boone from Cape Town AI. Cape Town AI, yes. The clues in the title there. Yeah. <laughs> Plus still available, so. Yeah, brilliant. Well, you got it. So, uh, yeah. Peter, welcome. Thank welcome you. Welcome to Cape Town. And uh, I guess you're an entrepreneur from Europe who's decided to come to Cape Town, a bit like me. Uh, I did that 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, what attracted you to Cape Town? So, uh, I had a pretty successful startup in the Netherlands, grew from 10 to 80, and uh, then I thought a little bit uh, like, um, is, uh, is this my purpose in life? And um, I had uh, difficult thoughts about running, running a company. So, I started uh, Cape Town AI, um, it's the same time zone also, with a couple of things. So, um, we c I came in with a purpose, so I want to use artificial intelligence in beneficial of the people and the planet. So actually we want to become here a global AI hub because we think we can be competitive here. <coughs> I want to create economic development in townships and also protect Africa's wildlife. And for the um, uh, economic development in townships, we started Enlabeler. And it's actually, uh, yeah, if you want to apply AI and you want to get value out of text or images, you need often uh, learn the computer what it is uh, to to train him, and that's annotation, data annotation. So basically, the, the concept with uh, Enlabeler is yeah. that you're creating a community of people that can uh, label and annotate data. Yeah. So labeled data feeds into the AI model; it makes it more accurate, uh, removes bias, etc., from from the algorithm. Uh, but at the same time, that's creating jobs. Uh, out in those communities. Do you want to explain a little bit uh, how that's going to work? And yeah, so the bigger picture is actually that you uh, have a community uh, where people can just log in op in an app and then can start doing micro job. Now we also found out that uh, some of the labeling work is uh, has has some security or high confidence. Uh, sure. um, These are like for commercial customers. Yeah. yeah. So <coughs> we're thinking more about now a hybrid model. So you have our, our mobile platform, but we have also a team in, uh, in one of the townships that actually uh, uh, yeah, fully employed work also on, on, on data labeling that has more, uh, yeah, that is more sensitive. Um, and the bigger thing also with a label and the app is actually, for instance, the very interesting part of, of Africa is that it has so many languages. If we want to uh, create an app that if you uh, talk Koza and I talk Zulu, we can create an app that actually if you speak into the app and it will automatically translate, it means that we can actually communicate. So in the future, but to, to learn and train that algorithm, you need to have it labeled. So if somebody speaks, you do it from speech to text and then from text, sure. mm -hmm. computer can, can, can learn it. And the, the, the bigger goal is also that with the app, everybody in the regions in South Africa could do that labeling work because it's an... Uh, yeah, so it this is a mass job creation at scale yeah. using micro, micro, work, micro jobs yeah. that people can literally do on their phone. Yeah. They've got access to mobile connectivity. Or what about, what if they can, can they do this on their laptop as well through the browser? Yeah, so we're aiming for a web app. Okay, web app. Yeah. Okay. But the cool part is, uh, if you are in Denmark and you want to also uh, uh, train in Denmark a chatbot or whatever, or speech to text, they can also uh, uh, connect with us and they can use our platform with the Danish people to do the labeling work. Sure. So at the moment, how far into that project are you? So we are actually now building uh, one of the features in the app, and that's uh, the annotation of images. And we're going to do the first proof of concept, and then we're going to scale. Uh, but we have already a couple of tenders now where we're into. Uh, we have a, uh, now a collaboration with Nespers Lab. So they have already uh, people that are trained. Uh, they have locations. So we can really, uh, at this moment, can really spin up, so if you want. If you have now a massively data annotation job, we can uh, yeah, spin up with hundreds of people in a couple of months. Now, as these um, people <coughs> that are working on these projects learn about labeling data, obviously yeah. they can now start to understand AI in a broader context, the yeah. fourth industrial revolution. And then do you believe or think or is there a plan to help those people then move forward maybe with a career in this or a job? Yeah. Or, or, or is, is there some progression beyond yeah. just labeling? Yeah. The cool part of the data labeling is that actually on the back, we use algorithms to see how good they are. All right, okay. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's also to ensure quality. 
Uh, but if there are people, but that's something we have to find out, uh, then uh, yeah, Google, Microsoft, they have these programs that people can work on their cloud environment. And that would be very beneficial in the future also for Cape Town AI. So the goal, and that would be very nice that it's a step, uh, it's, it's a mile step in their career, uh, because it's also, it's not the most, it's, it's very, could, could be very boring work. Uh, but if they do good, then there must be yeah. a loyalty in it. Yeah, I mean, I think I, you maybe heard me talk about this AI economic pipeline. So yeah. it starts with inspiring someone who knows nothing about yeah. uh, this technology or this subject in, 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 in a learning environment, maybe in school, in a disadvantaged community. Yeah. They can get inspired, maybe get, jump onto your platform. They can learn more about, they can earn some money as well. And they, they get rewarded uh, yeah. for doing the work and then progress into other programs that are, are being run here in the Cape. Maybe get involved with some of the programs like Microsoft or yeah. Amazon uh, or Google. Um, so where, where do you see the, the future beyond this year? I mean, obviously we come to the end of 2019, going into 2020. What, what's the big plan? You mentioned wildlife as well. What, what, what other plans have you got for your business? So with Cape Town AI, we want to um, spin up the team around 30 to, 40 to 50. Um, and the idea is that half of the clients are maybe in Africa and half overseas. So we bring new financial wealth. That's very important in my opinion for this country. And with data labeling, I hope uh, yeah, hundreds of people labeling uh, next year. Okay. And also a lot of data labeling from overseas. So my bigger purpose is that actually we bring new economic drivers and new financial wealth in the country while doing things for good. Now, I know that uh, Minister Abrahams, uh, she may be watching this film now, <laughs> I'm going to send it to her. Yeah. She wants to build a fourth industrial revolution army uh, in, in, uh, in young people in, yeah. in the country. And obviously, you're making a massive contribution to, to that. I mean, <clears throat> at the national level, I mean, clearly we're focusing here on Cape Town right yeah. now. Are, are the plans to try and roll this out also in, in KZN, in, in Hauteng, in um, sort of PE and, and, and other regions in the country? Yeah. Oh, me? Yeah. If I'm busy. Yeah, so we have... I, I know you're a busy guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have already clients in Joburg. Uh, okay, right. But... Um, uh, but I mean, I mean, people doing the... I mean, to oh, have the, the labeling work. Yeah, the labeling yeah, work. yeah, no, of course, of course. What would be for me very helpful, Nick, is if, uh, if you uh, say that there is a fourth industrial revolution, then um, it's, it's good to see, okay, but what's our playground? And in uh, my opinion, um, there are some things that on national level, then there needs to be a change. So for instance, if you want to train all those young talent and creative people here faster, we need to get people from overseas. Because there is not enough senior talent that can actually build up the skills here. And if you take a look how hard it is to get a visa and that data science and AI is not on the critical skills list of the right. gov. So, that, so there's a, an action for, for, for government yeah, that is, that is, from this conversation. Uh, yeah, is that's, yeah. Make it easier for people to get visas, yeah. get critical skills, yeah, get, get, and get that talent here. The people yeah. who really want to genuinely be here, yeah. people like me and you who've built businesses yeah. before, um, if you can make it easier to get a visa uh, to come into the country and set up a business and invest here, that would be a massive uh, boost for the economy. Yeah, and also getting money here is hard. Out is much harder, but also that kind of stuff and the IP if, yeah. you, if you change that a bit, you can create here an, 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 a climate, the same as Silicon uh, Valley, a, and, yeah. and you will know how much money is flowing there, how much yeah. economy there is. And, uh, yo. So make it easy to come here, make yeah. it easy to spend your money here. That's yeah. really what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, let's work on that together. Yeah, right? yeah. So look, Peter, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I mean, obviously, uh, you came to AI Expo this September. Yeah. Um, obviously, that was a new experience for you. How, how did you find the community that we built here, the trade community? No, I think it's a good community. So uh, if, you, if you take a look at the AI Expo, you see that there are, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, of tech talent and, and tech and same-minded people there that, that share thoughts. That's great. And uh, I think this kind of media is also necessary to, to see what's out there and, <coughs> and uh, create this new business driver in AI. And just to wrap up, you, you mentioned the wildlife. Uh, I know there's a couple of projects I've been in involved in around the edge around yeah. using AI to, to track wildlife. What, what, what's your project there? Yeah, so we, 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 we interviewed a lot of people in the ecosystem, and uh, there are a lot of uh, solutions already there out there. Um, I think it's more connecting the dots, and in my opinion, yeah, the whole poaching problem is, 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 is more than just get the poachers. So there's a whole industry behind it, what I found out, and uh, 
yeah, the question is, do you want to touch that? Uh, that that that's uh, a big, big challenge. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> challenge. <laughs> You've got a few challenges. So, already. but for us, it's cool that uh, if we can help Rangers uh, with some uh, intelligence from above, then uh, it would be amazing that we can volunteer on that. Brilliant. Well, Peter, thank you very much for joining us here on AI TV, yeah. and uh, yeah, best of luck with the business going into 2020. Thanks, man. Thank you.